All right, open your Bible to Revelation chapter 1, Revelation chapter 1. How many times have you heard people say Revelations, the book of Revelations? <laughs> well, it's uh, the book of Revelation because it's the book uh, that reveals the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I love the book of Revelation. Now, we're not going to go through Revelation chapter by chapter, verse by verse. I've done that several times. But what I want to do on Wednesday evening and Sunday evening is I want to try to give myself and you some encouragement about these days we're living in. If you're not careful, if you're not careful, you'll get discouraged easily, easily. Look around the auditorium tonight. Now, a lot of folk are not here because they are so concerned about the virus and uh, so forth and so on. Some are traveling and, and so forth and so on. But the, the devil would love to get, use this to get you and I discouraged. And uh, that's what the devil is working on. I listened to an interview the other evening by, uh, to John MacArthur by a young lady. And if you get an opportunity to see that latest interview with John MacArthur, uh, you ought to listen to what he had to say about the virus in California. It would amaze you about the truth of what's really going on in California rather than what you're hearing on the news and so forth and so on. You know what he said? He said, we never pushed our people to come to church. They told us we couldn't come, and he said all of a sudden the people just came. They just came, flocked into the auditorium. Fills it twice on Sunday morning with 3,000 people, and no one wearing masks. Some are, of course. But then he gave the reason for that. You need to listen to that. It might uh, help you a little bit and take a little away a little bit of discouragement from you. But uh, I believe God's in charge, don't you? And I believe that he wants us uh, to live happy and excited and not get discouraged because that's exactly what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to listen to the wrong voices. He wants you to listen to the voices that will not really give you the truth. They'll tell a little bit of the truth but not the whole truth. Satan is a master liar and a master deceiver. And we Christians need to be alert and we need to be awake. But we'll start in Revelation 1 and probably take a couple of sessions in Revelation 1. Sunday night we'll go to chapter 18 and chapter 19. Chapter 18 and chapter 19 are great chapters in Revelation. Chapter 18 tells us about the destruction of the false prophets and how Satan's uh, host are going to be defeated and destroyed. Chapter 19, the marriage supper of the Lamb, and then 20 and 21 and 22, and it entails what you and I are going to be enjoying in that wonderful place called heaven. And by the way, if you're looking at the signs of the time biblically, I think you'd have to agree with me, everything is just fitting in place, just fitting in place. And uh, I believe with all of my heart, we're right in uh, the end times, and I'm looking forward uh, to the coming uh, of our Lord. Sunday morning, I want to bring you a message on the Christian's relationship to the will of God. The Christian's relationship to the will of God. I think I said something about this a few weeks ago, but I never will forget Dr. Lee Robertson preached on the will of God one Sunday morning at Highland Park. And he said they were leaving the auditorium and said everybody was just about gone but a few people and him. And he was walking out and this young student walked up to him. And he said, Dr. Robertson, can I ask you a question? And I'm not trying to be mean, but I'd just like to ask you. He said, go ahead, son. He said, Dr. Robertson, you just preached on the will of God. Are you in the will of God right now? Are you in the will of God right now? And Dr. Robertson said, I'm not going to tell you what I told him. But he said, I'm glad he asked that question. And he said, I will ask that from people. Are you in the will of God right now? Just to get them thinking. So I want to ask you this question tonight. 
Think about it now. And I ask myself this question today. Are you in God's will for you now? I wonder how many people that are members of our church are in the will of God now. Have you noticed that Christians can just be up and down? Up and down, up and down. And that's the way the devil loves it. Because a Christian that's just up and down, up and down is a prime target for his attack. Amen? And so it's very, very, very important. Now, the reason I'm beginning in chapter 1 is I don't want to just, uh, for some of you that may have not studied much in the book of Revelation and you've not studied it in, in a while, uh, I want you to uh, get the idea of what the book of Revelation is all about. But it'll also cheer you and encourage you when we go down through here looking at these verses. Now, pray with me in two areas. Pray for my knee uh, that it will heal uh, soon. And then I'm only in, I'm in the, what, second week, Sue, of the, of the cataract. Uh, I'm taking three uh, drops in my eye every day this week, two next week, one the next week, and then I'll go back to the doctor and see if I need prescription glasses at all or whether I just need reading glasses. And so... Um, um, I have to be careful. I can't, the small print I can't read. So uh, you pray for me if you will. Now, look at Revelation chapter 1 and look at the first few verses. I thought about reading the whole thing, but uh, because of time I won't do that. Now, in verse 1, the revelation. That's an interesting statement right there, isn't it? The revelation. The word revelation means an unveiling. This book is an unveiling. It's an unveiling of the person and work of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's an unveiling of his plan for mankind from creation to heaven. I love the book of Revelation. Chapter 1 deals with the things that thou hast seen. Chapter 2, the things, well, chapter 1, the things that are, the things that, that are happening now is in chapter 2 and chapter 3, and then the, what things that will happen hereafter is from chapter 4 throughout the rest of the book of Revelation. That's, so it's a, it's a book of an unveiling. And so he says, uh, I want to show you my plan and my purpose for the world, for people, and for you. So it's an unveiling. But it's an unveiling of Jesus Christ. Now that's interesting to me. People go to church for a lot of things, don't they? They go to be seen. They go because they've got a class. They go because their parents make them go. Uh, there's a lot of different reasons that people go to church. But do we go to church because of the person of the Lord Jesus Christ? Because we want to love him and know him. How many times have you been by yourself? And you just was overwhelmed with the presence of the Lord. And you just looked up and told him you loved him. Lord, I love you. Thank you for what you have done for me. And maybe you get so filled up that the tears come. And uh, you're thinking about what he did for you and what he's doing now. He died for me that I might have everlasting life. But he continues to live because he lives, we'll live also. Amen? And so he says the revelation and the unveiling of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show. Now, the word show means to reveal. I'm not going to get in a hurry here. As you study the book of Revelation, many things will be revealed to you and to me and to the church that we need to know. Think with me now. As things get closer and closer, as things draw nearer and nearer to the rapture, things on this earth are going to escalate. Now, they will escalate at a faster pace, a faster pace, a more faster pace as you get nearer and nearer the rapture. 
And you look around you today and you listen to what's going on and I'm sure that you'll agree with me already. I believe that this virus is Satan instigated. I believe he knew how he could use it and all of the lies that go along with it, all of the things that's been added to it and to scare people to death. John MacArthur made this statement. He said, I cannot visit my people in the hospital. They need this pastoral staff. The church needs the pastoral staff. When a, a lady or a man goes into the hospital, they want their pastor to come and pray for them and be there for them. I don't know how many times I've gone into the hospital and a lady would be in the bed or the man would be in the bed and it might be very serious and they would say, Pastor, I knew you would come. Thank you for coming. I want you to read some scripture. I want you to pray for me. And they said, it just lifts my spirits because my pastor is here or because my associate pastor is here and so forth and so on. When the Lord allows me to do it, I'm going to bring a message and a series of messages on the church and its responsibility to one another and its responsibility to the world and so forth. I don't think a lot of churches have an, any idea what church is all about. There was a church, Sue and I were watching it, and it's all about the music, and it's all about the lights. It's all about the show. The sermon was a little bit of a sermonette, but far from anything from the truth. You see, the book of Revelation is an unveiling of the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, but it is a revealing of that person. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. Now go back to the verse again and watch. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants. You say, well, I know what a servant is. You go into a mansion, and the people are very rich, and there are servants there. And they call on them to bring them coffee, to bring them their meal, to wait on them hands and foot. We get that idea. But the word here for servant is bond slave. Bond slave. Bond slave. It's interesting to me. Now watch this again. I won't, don't, don't miss this. Who does the Lord reveal his purpose to? Who does he reveal his plan and purpose? Who does he reveal his deep things to? Not to everybody. Not to everybody. His children, of course, but his children that walk uprightly. He is not going to reveal his deep things, the deep treasures from his riches to those that just are half-heartedly serving. So, am I a bond slave? Now, in the Bible times, here's what a bond slave was. He couldn't pay his bills. His family couldn't live. They didn't have anything. So he would sell himself to a master and become his bond servant, his bond slave. Now here's what they would do. The man would come to the middle of the town where they held court, basically. And the man would come forward and the leaders of the town would say to this man, are you willing to become a bond slave to this master? Yes, I must do so. I cannot pay my bills. And so the people there would say something like this to the people. This man has come. He cannot pay his bills. His family cannot eat. So he has volunteered to become a bond servant of this master. Now you understand you'll have to serve him the rest of your life. Yes. So they would go over to an awl and they would pierce his ear and there would be a hole there. And they'd put a ring in that hole in his ear. And that would signify he belonged to this master. 
whatever his master said he was to do. Are you getting the idea? Who does the Lord reveal his secret, deep, deep things with? Bond, slur, bond servants, slaves. Do I meet that criteria? Do you meet that criteria? I watch these big preachers that make the big money. I mean big money. But they preach lies. They preach lies. They're not a bond slave of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not saying that it's wrong for a pastor to, to have money. I'm not saying that. Uh, that's between God and that man. Amen? That's between God and that man. He'll have to answer to God for himself. I'll have to answer the Lord for myself. So, he says, watch, I'm going to show unto my servants. I'm going to show unto my bond slaves things which must shortly come to pass. The word shortly, you know what it means? With speed. What he's saying is this, when these things begin to happen, they will happen with speed. I believe we're beginning to see a little bit of, a little bit of that speeding up now. Things are happening on a worldwide scale now, right? And so I'm just uh, getting so anxious to hear that trumpet sound, but I want to be faithful to the Lord until he comes. Now, so he says, unto his servants things which must, it's going to happen. Why? Because God's preordained it. Now, there is a, a preordaining in the, the mind of God. He preordains things to happen, and it's going to happen. And it's shortly come to pass. And then watch what he says. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. John, I'm going to tell you about the future. I'm going to reveal these things for you so you'll know them, so you'll understand them. And he did it by his angel unto his servant, John. And so John is given this revelation. Aren't you glad that he was? What would we be without revelation? Amen? What would we be? Now, I thank God for First, Second, and Third John. I thank God for the epistles. I thank God for Daniel. I love those books. I love the, those books. Down through my years, I've had the privilege of, of um, reading through those books many, many times, studying through those books, outlining those books many times. Some of them are very difficult. Some are not as difficult. But the book of Revelation, you understand only a bond slave of Jesus will be able to really understand the deep things of God. And I want to know those things. And so, once again, he says, the revelation, the unveiling of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants the things which must shortly, in other words, they'll happen with speed, come to pass, and he sent and signified by his angel unto his servant, John. Now, think with me about the importance of studying the book of Revelation. In verse 1, again, you see the presentation of the book. That means this book is very, very important. I want to ask you, while we're dealing with this, to read something in Revelation every day. Please, if you will. Maybe if you'd do this, read chapter 1 several times. Chapter 1, several times. And then go over to chapter 18. Let's turn over there for just a moment. In chapter 18 of the book of Revelation. <clears throat> Now, I said this, I want to study this with you because I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. You know, it's easy to get discouraged if you're not careful. Isn't it? Easy. 
how will I react when if I'm if I'm here when the real persecution comes just before the rapture how will I react how will you we need to be ready for that but I want to tell you this there's going to come a day listen there's going to come a day when you and I will not have to deal with the devil we will be there oh and by the way we'll get into this as you get into chapter 18 19 20 21 22 we'll get into this we will be there when Jesus himself casts Satan into the lake of fire where the beast and false prophet are and he will be tormented day and night forever and ever and ever. Now, uh, our time's getting away from us, but I want you to just, I want to read some of this out of chapter 18, go to chapter 19 and show you why I want us to study this because it'll instruct It'll, it'll, it'll just in, enthrall your heart. Now watch this. After these things, after what things? After the church age, uh, things now are going into the eternal state. After these things, I saw an angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. Some people believe that's Jesus himself. Others do not. We'll not let that's for another time, another study. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the things of the earth have committed, the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out from her, my people, that you may be partaker, not partakers of her sins, that you may receive not her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Stop right there. A lot of evil has taken place down through history, hasn't it? We've watched some awful things happen. World War I, World War II. I mean awful things, massacres, awful things happening. One of these days, it'll all be gone. This great Babylon that represented Everything that's against God, everything that's evil, everything that's vile. One of these days, God's people is going to shout, So long, Babylon, we'll never have to deal with you again. And so, again in verse 4, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you may be not be partakers of her, and receive not her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works. The cup which she hath filled, fill her double. God has some ju judgments upon people that have hurt his people, killed his people, persecuted his people. And he's going to deal with them. But watch this now. She hath filled her, filled her double. How much she has glorified herself and lived delicately. So much torment and sorrow give her, for she it hath in her heart. I said as a queen, I'm no widow, and shall no sorrow, see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. Death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. I love that verse, don't you? Look at that verse. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. Death and mourning and famine and shall utterly be burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived delicately with her 
shall bewail her and lamb it for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. And there's some great things in that chapter, and I'll not read any more there. We'll save that for a later time. However, look down in verse 21. Just a little bit more illustration for you. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of the harpers and musicians and of the pipers and the trumpeters shall be heard no more all at all in thee, and no craftsman or whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all of thee. One day we'll not have to deal with these people in any way, form, or fashion. But now you come down to chapter 19. And we'll just get into this just a little bit. After these things. I love that phrase, after these things. You ought to go through it and underline every time it says, after these things. After these things. I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. By the way, let me stop right there. No sinner will be able to look at God and say, you're unrighteous. Do you know what they'll do? They will agree that he was a righteous God and they were filthy. They'll agree with it on that day. Why am I saying this? I'm not saying this because I wish this upon them, but they brought it on themselves. They turned against the holy God. One day you and I, listen, one day you and I, your family, your family will be together. I just think about it often. We arrive in heaven and there's our loved ones there. And we'll be together forevermore. Every church that I have pastored, I'll be, be with my friends to see them again. And no tears and no sorrow, but joy forevermore. What do you think it's going to be like when you see the Savior the first time? What do you think it's going to be like? And you see the nails in his hand. I don't know how he looks. I don't have a painting or I don't have a picture. But I believe that he's altogether lovely. And I believe he's the morning star. And so you can use every pronoun you want to to describe him. And let's just wait till that day and have a, have a spell. Amen? So after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he has judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath ravaged the blood of her servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia. And her smoke rose up forever and ever. Can you imagine a place where it's dark? They tell me that the flames in the lake of fire, not hell, Everybody in hell suffers the same where they are now. But they will be taken out of hell, stand at the great white throne judgment to hear God's judgment, and they will agree with him. And they'll be cast in this lake of fire where the beast and false prophet are and will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Now, I've heard Bible scholars tell me this. They say that the fire there in this lake of fire is so intense, so intense, that it creates a darkness over all of that evil place. Now I think for just a moment, they know they're going to be there forever and ever and ever. And the smoke is ascending up and they can't see. But when they do see someone, now think with me a moment, use your spiritual imagination for a moment. Think for just a moment of a man who listened to a false prophet. Are you listening? 
And he sees that false prophet. I'm here because of you. You led me astray. You, you told me a lie. You preached a lie. I believe what you told me. I'm in hell with you. Why did you do this to me? Now, Bible scholars, they believe that weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth more, means more than just, I'm hurting, I'm hurting, I'm hurting. It could be such evil that they intensely beat one another. I don't know. But the Bible says that it's a coming an awful place, an awful time. Verse 3, and again they said, Hallelujah, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne saying, Amen, Hallelujah. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all you, ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great, and I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude. Listen to this now. And as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a mighty thundering saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Can you imagine a choir of 10,000, 20,000? Um, I listened to a group from California. And their choir, their quartet, their trios, and so forth and so on. And one song that they sang that I really love, and Jesse ought to get this, and it's called When All God's Singers Get Home. When all God, huh? You know, God's given men and women gifts to sing. Jesse thought he had that gift. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Jesse, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Can you imagine that? There's going to be rewards for the singers. And did you know something else? There's going to be a reward for the preacher too. God is man. Are you looking forward to it? I am. I'm looking forward to it. Now, I was going to talk about the presentation of the book and the purpose of the book and the penman of the book, but we'll save that for uh, maybe Sunday evening, okay? Or, or next Wednesday, however I decide the Lord wants me to, uh, uh, to get into this. S study. Study uh, chapter 19 through the rest of the book. Read chapter 1 uh, again and again and again and again and uh, let it just uh, absolutely thrill your souls. Uh, let me close with this. Look at chapter 20. Chapter 20. I just want to read some of this for you to, to get take you home on. Verse 4. And I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads and on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. That's going to be something, isn't it? Living and reigning with him a thousand years. After that, the devil will be at loose for a little season. Then he'll be cast into the lake of fire forever and ever and ever. And then there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth forever and ever. All right, verse 3. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. For on such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Why? Because there's going to be people going into the millennium in physical bodies that will reject Jesus. They'll give lip service, but their heart's not with him. And all this is is an opportunity for them to come to the forefront, and they will. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, together together the battle of whom is about as the, sea, uh, the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. I love this. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and false prophet are. 
and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And he goes on. You can read it for yourself. I get so thrilled when I get to Revelation. That's why I love the book of Revelation. And let God just thrill your heart with what he said. Now, we'll try to finish this uh, next Wednesday, and then Sunday evening we'll deal a little bit differently. And then pray for Sunday morning as we talk about the matter of the will of God, how important that is uh, for uh, a believer. All right, let's stand and we'll be dismissed in prayer. I hope you have a great rest of the week. Call people and invite them to come. Call the people that weren't here Sunday and just give them uh, an invitation to get in here and get busy for the Lord. Father, thank you for faithful people. They're an encouragement, a great encouragement. And I pray that you'll bless them in a wonderful way. Be with those that are sick, that are not here, those that are traveling. Now give us a great day on Sunday. I pray that we'll see people saved, people getting right with you. And just bless in a wonderful way. In the Savior's name, amen.